him here. I'll get him if they come around. Walter, I got him coming through. Welcome to Talk of the Bay. I'm Christine Barrington. You have just heard the opening scene of local playwright Spike Wong's White Sky Falling Dragon, which is opening April 19th at the Actors Studio in downtown Santa Cruz and will run through May 5th. Now, I need to tell you listeners, this is a rare opportunity to experience a very local and incredibly meaningful history. The play tells the story of a young Chinese American man's return to small town Watsonville, California in 1944 after his World War II service as a bombardier, and it is inspired by Spike's father. Captain Ernest Wong, a United States Air Force pilot. Spike Wong's plays have been performed in the Bay Area, off-Broadway, and internationally. Is that correct, yes. Spike? Yes. And uh, and he has also been a local educator teaching at high schools here in the Santa Cruz region, as well as Los Gatos. He has written a marvelous and moving production with White Sky, Falling Dragon, and I am thrilled that we get to talk about it here today. Spike, thank you so much for joining us on Talk of the Bay. Thank you, Christine. Thanks for having me. It's great. Wow. And so, um, you know, before we went on air, um, we were talking about what a meaningful play this is. And so I just want to um, jump right in and give you a chance to introduce to our listeners why this play is so meaningful. Well, <laughs> it, it's meaningful on so many levels, not the least of which is it's an immigrant story. And all families that trace their lineage back to immigration to this country have have similar experiences, but just with a different culture. But another aspect is it's, it's honoring all types of people who commit to military service, who feel certain commitments to the country. It is about family roles, family dynamics. It's about the strength of families through generations. It's about individual trauma and finding uniquely cultural ways to move through that trauma. And important for Santa Cruz County is it's a local story. So this is inspired by my father, who uh, was raised in Watsonville. He was Watsonville's first non-white city councilman. He was discharged from World War II as a, a captain. And we always said around the dinner table, well, Dad, you're a Chinese guy. You were discharged from the U.S. Army Air Force at the rank of captain, you must have done something? And the answer was, no, not much. Yeah. Uh, I have relatives in my life. My father-in-law served in World War II with Patton's Third Army. Didn't talk about it much. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. the way it, he ended up speaking to me was, after both of my parents died, I was cleaning their home, and I discovered that my mom had saved every letter that my dad wrote home from the war, and there were hundreds. Mm. So I would stay up at night reading these letters and their romance when my dad was 19 and she was 17, and the extraordinary uh, historical moments, their feelings about it, their experiences, it had to come out in a play. Now, I... Um listen to some other interviews that you had done and and you said it it, it really started unrolling in inside of you right yeah yeah mm -hmm. it was it was truly this story moving through me and without being too maudlin about it it was really the experiences and the voices of my ancestors going all the way back to a little peasant village in china that doesn't even exist anymore and feeling that strength of you know what all of those peasants chipped in a little bit of money. They somehow got my grandfather here. 
dreaming someday that somebody like me would be born, somebody relatively highly educated, somebody making a good living as a professional, and somebody who was an educator, Mm. and somebody who had this better and more beautiful life. Mm. And it's that sense of duty and responsibility and obligation to honor them as well, which is in this story. Yeah, and we don't want to give the story away. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm so tempted to talk about, you know, <laughs> your so many aspects of the play. But what we really want is for y'all to go see the play, which is going to be at Actors Theater, which is downtown Santa Cruz, opening April 19th, playing through May 5th. And um, of the many layers of meaning, we were talking um, before we went on the air of how personal this is, how um, you're not a composer, but you composed music. Mm -hmm. And um, you also, aspects of the set are are furniture from your parents and grandparents' home. Mm -hmm. And uh, so let's talk about some of these incredibly uh, layered, um, personal layers of meaning that are on that stage. Yeah. One of the things I found out was that the story had, it, it was compelling me to make this quantum leap and what I could do on stage to the extent that in order to present Cantonese, Chinese American culture authentically, it meant I could not turn it over to another company or another director. So I decided the only way to ensure that is to fund the production myself, the first one in Mountain View. And this one is a co-production with Santa Cruz Actors Theater. So the personal connection is that in order to create an atmosphere for the actors and hence an atmosphere for the audience that was just oozing with the, the the depth and the sensitivity of the culture. It had to feature things from my grandparents' home. Even the uniform that the lead actor wears, it's the uniform my dad came home from the war in 77 years ago. Uh, Part of the costumes that the lead female wears, they're actually custom-made Chinese gowns made for my mother many, many years ago. So that this, the whole set has these pieces with history, but even the costumes we have, you know, they, they bear a kind of testament for both the actors. And because the actors feel the weight of this, the audience gets the same feeling even though they can't identify where it's coming from or what it is. But it's this sort of grand gesture through the ages Mm -hmm. that all of these sacrifices have landed here so that I have an opportunity to present this story. Yeah, and so much um, of our understanding and experience of the world actually comes to us through our felt sense you yes. know, there's this Cartesian idea, I think, therefore I am. And more and more uh, researchers are coming to say, no, actually, it's I sense, therefore I am. Mm-hmm. So the fact that you've written the play, you've directed the play, your families, many of your families, precious, you know, clothing, furniture, um, it's just layers upon layers of a lived world coming to life there for all of us who get to witness it. And I was saying, um, I I love to go to a a theater in San Francisco that does a lot of culturally relevant works, and they call themselves an empathy gym. And I love that. I think that's that's theater at its best, right? We, we, We get to, it's so hard in our modern society, like you and I might meet at some function here in Santa Cruz, and I wouldn't get to know that your family history, like getting to experience your play. And so so we get to immerse ourselves in another world uh, that's written with love and care and artistry and channeling, like you say, your, your ancestors, and then it enters into us. And then, you know, those of us who aren't a part of the, the Chinese American experience, we get a layer of understanding we otherwise wouldn't have. Yes. One of the, one of the great things about that kind of understanding is this, something that I didn't expect Um, As I was writing the play, I was very, very cognizant of trying to be as culturally accurate as I could be, according to my experience. I know I'm Cantonese, Chinese American. I know I lived with my grandparents for a while. So I was trying to present this experience as very genuine and real. What I discovered was that the 
deeper I got into it so that I could heighten the sensitivity and the precision of the portrayal of the culture, the deeper I got into it, the more I came to understand it's universal. Mm-hmm. And on opening night in Mountain View in 2022, a woman came up to me. She was a, a, rec- a, fellow, a relatively recent immigrant from Chile, and she said, I came to this country nine years ago, and that story on stage was my story. She had locked into the immigrant experience, the difficulty, the challenges, the the ways to work hard to try to find ways through and around these obstacles. So there's lots of layers that I was mentioning earlier that allow the audience to connect with this play on different levels. Yeah. And listeners, in case you've just tuned in, you are listening to KSQD in Santa Cruz, KSQT Prunedale, and we are community radio for all of the Monterey Bay. I have with me in the studio uh, Spike Wong, playwright and director of of a marvelous production that uh, depicts a local story that that played out in Watsonville in the Chinese American community, and uh, it is p- opening April nineteenth. It's playing through May fifth, and so. Um, I, I heard you also share a story of a Greek man that came up and basically said the same thing. You were like, this big oh, burly oh, guy yeah. came up and he's like, this yeah. is my experience, yeah. right? So That was phenomenal. He came up and he had a look on his face and I, I didn't know if I should run or <laughs> stand and talk. And he came up and just grabbed my hand mm. and shook it and shook it. And he looked me in the eyes and he said, let me tell you something. I am Greek, but that was my story. And it was, oh my goodness. The, 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 the odds of that are just, I don't know, it's not something you expect when you're writing. Right. You, you had said something also before we went on air that, that this has been um, a labor of, of love and something into which you've given sort of everything you've got because you yes. wanted one chance. Could you, you share what you said to me? You know what? comment that you were like I, I want this one chance oh, yeah. yeah yeah it was um the the deeper I got into the writing of this uh the more I realized it was just this powerful story feeling moving through me because I, I wrote this in two countries I actually started here in Santa Cruz and I actually finished it in Barcelona <laughs> of all places <laughs> but one of those issues is that I realized that in my lifetime, I wanted to take that one opportunity at grandeur Mm. to do something regardless of the cost, because it was so important to do. And not just artistically, but with my life in a way that would somehow uplift other people by opening up their perspectives on things. Yeah, there's this saying that theories divide people and stories unite them. Yes. Stories are are our most fundamental language. A, a well-told story can erase barriers and solve open pathways to solutions that no amount of debate and arguing and theoretical juxtapositions you can come up with. And and this story that is has been so moving for so many people is like again, is a story of, of, of lived life that, you know, if we're thinking, oh, family and the garden and in their living room and on the basketball court, um, pretty ordinary stuff. But the ordinary often is the extraordinary, isn't it? It's often like being a, being a playwright is frequently like being a poet where you're looking for the extraordinary in the ordinary. Mm-hmm. And in this case, you know, I didn't have to look very far because I was feeling so strongly. Yeah. And so I do want to say, so this was a play. It's a play in two acts, right? And yes. it opens It opens big. It opens in the theater of war, which if those of us who were listening when we started, in, in a, a squadron of B-17, some 67, 66 strong, right? Flying a mission. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Around there, yes. Around there. And so it starts really big, and then it lands like very intimately in the home of your family. Yeah. And um, if you would, would you be willing to share the story about your uncle? Oh, yes, yes. Well, you know, you never know who's going to be in the audience. And Mm -hmm. you certainly cannot predict 
any sort of a reaction. Mm -hmm. But on closing night in Mountain View in 2022, um, I came out of the theater to discover that two of my former students had stopped by my uncle's home in Watsonville. My uncle's 92. They took him to the play. He watched it. And when I came out, after the show, he was standing there and we hugged each other and then we spontaneously started weeping, at which point he whispered in my ear, tonight you saved my life. And it took me a few days to figure it out. But what happened was his wife had died about a year and a half before the play and he had been spiraling down, down, down. It was in a very dark place psychologically. He was the only guy to see this play who knew all of the characters on stage at the ages that they are on stage. So that when the character who manages to find the way through tragedy is speaking, it was as if she was speaking to him. Mm. And he took it in so deeply that it lifted him out of this depression. Tonight, you saved my life. Just extraordinary. Mm. Ah, I meaning is is sort of my my uh, icing on my cupcake of life, and um, I'm going to ask you a, a tough question, but mm. I think you might be up to it. How, as as an artist and a playwright, somebody who also educated young people for years, so you're deep in the human experience. How does one define meaning? <laughs> yeah. How do you define it or how do you experience it? You know, yeah, there are what certain, is it? What is it? When there, we say, there are oh. a lot of philosophers who maintain that basically um, if it means something to you, it's meaningful. Mm -hmm. uh, which in a roundabout way is perfectly fine, but I think really that the meaning is based on what your philosophy of life is, what your principles of how you live really are. And for me, it's been a lifelong attempt at giving. Mm. If I'm in a position to give or to help, I want to try to do that. Mm. Because there are certain talents or skills or strengths that I might have that I can use to help somebody somehow. Right, and that's what you see with a lot of the characters in this play. They're all, it's like, you know, molecules exchanging <laughs> yeah. energy. They're bumping into each other, and they're trying to find a way to love, trying yeah. to find a way to help, trying to find a way forward in a moment that has been shattering. It's been, you know, World War II was shattering globally, yes. shattering for the, the, the soldiers, for, you know, the, the Air Force pilots, uh, you know, what they did to, to go up in the sky and be trapped, right? You know, yeah. you, you cover that really well. It, right? it is that feeling of being trapped um, because as part of my research, I actually flew in a B-17 bomber in the bombardier's compartment. My dad was a bombardier, mm -hmm. and I was actually wearing my dad's leather flight jacket. Mm. When I got on board, they, I said, you know, this is my dad's uh, flight jacket from World War II. It was last in the air in a B-17 75 years ago, and they put me into the bombardier's compartment and said, here's your dad's office. And it was just an extraordinary experience, again, relating to the fact, you know, the actual garments and wearing that jacket and being in that position and, and trying to imagine my 19-year-old father doing that. Right, a 19-year-old kid yeah. in such a critical position, and yeah. it's so freaking cold. Like Very. like we like to think, oh, you know, they were flying up there, but it was like insulated, and it was nice. No. It's cold, no. it's loud, loud, and they're vulnerable, and they're watching their comrades every day get shot out of the sky. So yeah. your, your father, you know, went through this shattering yeah. moment, and, you know... There is a, mm. this is not really a spoiler alert as much as it is a, a touch of caution, and that is that the opening scene is a combat scene, mm. and I don't pull any punches in it. Right, because that really is the, the, the yeah. moment, the moment that, that gives momentum to, that leads to that moment of 
coming yeah. together in healing, which we're not going to talk about because people need to go and see the play exactly. to experience that moment yeah. of, of wisdom and insight. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah, generally, I like to say that, you know, the music alone is worth the price of admission because it's it's composed for this this piece. And then all of the music um, in between the scenes is composed by uh, Perry Young of New York City. He actually is in the Netflix series Warrior. He's one of the main characters in there. And I just cold called him one day and I said, look, Perry, I'm doing this Chinese American thing. Can you help a brother out? You got any new music I could use? And he sent some files over and said, Mm -hmm. feel free to use what you want. So this is like a piece that has a lot of broad support in the Chinese American community. Mm -hmm. It's not often that you'll see a play that is specifically Cantonese, Chinese American, and yet designed for a very broad audience to hear. Wow. And some and some of this music now, did I hear you correctly? You were saying that you you sort of sang it or told him what you're hearing in your I mind and told he him shaped what some I of was it. hearing. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah, I told him what mm-hmm. I was hearing mm-hmm. and what I was feeling. Mm-hmm. And he get kind of uh, this kind of a movement and physically, this is how I want my reaction to be at this point. Mm-hmm. So it's very cool. Um, writing, not really writing music, just by explaining something to somebody who can write the notes down for you. It's beautiful. Yeah. So there's intimacy and meaning woven through every layer of this play. So if you uh, want to go see it, dear listeners, it's going to be at the Actors Theater. You can get tickets at Santa Cruz Actors Theater.org. And also, if you go to ksqd.org, there is a show page for about the show. There's a link there that you can follow to get tickets. And again, it it opens April 19th. It runs through May 5th. Spike, thank you so much for taking the time to come down to the studio. Thank you, Christine. It means the world to me to be able to talk about this project. Mm, I can tell. And it's wonderful to get to hear about it. I look forward to seeing the play. And uh, folks, we'll be back with more on Talk of the Bay right after this short break. <laughs> 